Who is 14th Dalai Lama? The 14th Dalai Lama, spiritual name, Jetson Jampul Nawang Lobsang Yeshe Tenzin Gyatso, also known as Tenzin Gyatso, born 6 July 1935, known to the Tibetan people as Galwa Rinpoche, is, as the incumbent Dalai Lama, the highest spiritual leader and head of Tibet. He is considered a living bodhisattva, specifically, an emanation of Avalokitesvara in Sanskrit, and Chenrezig in Tibetan. He is also the leader and a monk of the Gelug school, the newest school of Tibetan Buddhism, formerly headed by the Ganden Tripa. The central government of Tibet, the Ganden Fodrang, invested the Dalai Lama with temporal duties until his exile in 1959. The 14th Dalai Lama was born to a farming family in Taktsar, Hongya village, in the traditional Tibetan region of Amdu, administratively Qinghai, Republic of China. He was selected as the Tulku of the 13th Dalai Lama in 1937, and formally recognized as the 14th Dalai Lama in a public declaration near the town of Bumchen in 1939. As with the recognition process for his predecessor, a golden urn selection process was exempted and approved by the central government of the Republic of China. His enthronement ceremony was held in Lhasa on the 22nd of February 1940 and he eventually assumed full temporal, political, duties on the 17th of November 1950, at 15 years of age, after the People's Republic of China's occupation of Tibet. The Tibetan government administered the historic Tibetan regions of Yusang, Kham and Amdu. Subsequent to the annexation of Tibet by the People's Republic of China, during the 1959 Tibetan uprising, the Dalai Lama escaped to India, where he continues to live in exile while remaining the spiritual leader of Tibet. On 29 April 1959, the Dalai Lama established the independent Tibetan government in exile in the North Indian hill station of Missouri, which then moved in May 1960 to Dharamshala, where he resides. He retired as political head in 2011 to make way for a democratic government, the Central Tibetan Administration. The Dalai Lama advocates for the welfare of Tibetans and since the early 1970s has called for the middle way approach with China to peacefully resolve the issue of Tibet. The Dalai Lama travels worldwide to give Tibetan Mahayana and Vajrayana Buddhism teachings, and his Kalachakra teachings and initiations are international events. He also attends conferences on a wide range of subjects, including the relationship between religion and science, meets with other world leaders, religious leaders, philosophers, and scientists, online and in person. His work includes focus on the environment, economics, women's rights, nonviolence, interfaith dialogue, physics, astronomy, Buddhism and science, cognitive neuroscience, reproductive health and sexuality. The Dalai Lama was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1989. Time magazine named the Dalai Lama one of the children of Gandhi, and Gandhi's spiritual heir to nonviolence. Top 50 quotes by Dalai Lama 14. Happiness is not something ready-made. It comes from your own actions. Love is the absence of judgment. If you think you are too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito. My religion is very simple. My religion is kindness. There is a saying in Tibetan, tragedy should be utilized as a source of strength. No matter what sort of difficulties, how painful experience is, if we lose our hope, that's a real disaster. Every day, think as you wake up, today I am fortunate to be alive, I have a precious human life, I am not going to waste it. I am going to use all my energies to develop myself, to expand my heart out to others, to achieve enlightenment for the benefit of all beings. I am going to have kind thoughts towards others, I am not going to get angry or think badly about others. I am going to benefit others as much as I can. Love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. Remember that the best relationship is one in which your love for each other exceeds your need for each other. Know the rules well, so you can break them effectively. Silence is sometimes the best answer. Our prime purpose in this life is to help others. And if you can't help them, at least don't hurt them. If a problem is fixable, if a situation is such that you can do something about it, then there is no need to worry. If it's not fixable, then there is no help in worrying. There is no benefit in worrying whatsoever. Remember that sometimes not getting what you want is a wonderful stroke of luck. Choose to be optimistic, it feels better. People take different roads seeking fulfillment and happiness. Just because they're not on your road doesn't mean they've gotten lost. This is my simple religion. No need for temples. No need for complicated philosophy. 
Your own mind, your own heart is the temple. Your philosophy is simple kindness. Judge your success by what you had to give up in order to get it. If you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. This is my simple religion. There is no need for temples, no need for complicated philosophy. Our own brain, our own heart is our temple, the philosophy is kindness. When we meet real tragedy in life, we can react in two ways. Either by losing hope and falling into self-destructive habits, or by using the challenge to find our inner strength. We can never obtain peace in the outer world until we make peace with ourselves. If you can cultivate the right attitude, your enemies are your best spiritual teachers because their presence provides you with the opportunity to enhance and develop tolerance, patience and understanding. Only the development of compassion and understanding for others can bring us the tranquility and happiness we all seek. World peace must develop from inner peace. Peace is not just mere absence of violence. Peace is, I think, the manifestation of human compassion. Look at children. Of course they may quarrel, but generally speaking they do not harbor ill feelings as much or as long as adults do. Most adults have the advantage of education over children, but what is the use of an education if they show a big smile while hiding negative feelings deep inside? Children don't usually act in such a manner. If they feel angry with someone, they express it, and then it is finished. They can still play with that person the following day. Take into account that great love and great achievements involve great risk. There is only one important point you must keep in your mind and let it be your guide. No matter what people call you, you are just who you are. Keep to this truth. You must ask yourself how is it you want to live your life. We live and we die, this is the truth that we can only face alone. No one can help us, not even the Buddha. So consider carefully, what prevents you from living the way you want to live your life? All suffering is caused by ignorance. People inflict pain on others in the selfish pursuit of their own happiness or satisfaction. I believe compassion to be one of the few things we can practice that will bring immediate and long-term happiness to our lives. I'm not talking about the short-term gratification of pleasures like sex, drugs or gambling, though I'm not knocking them, but something that will bring true and lasting happiness. The kind that sticks. A truly compassionate attitude toward others does not change even if they behave negatively or hurt you. Be kind whenever possible. It is always possible. The more you are motivated by love, the more fearless and free your action will be. Old friends pass away, new friends appear. It is just like the days. An old day passes, a new day arrives. The important thing is to make it meaningful. A meaningful friend, or a meaningful day. We can live without religion and meditation, but we cannot survive without human affection. Give the ones you love wings to fly, roots to come back and reasons to stay. There are only two days in the year that nothing can be done. One is called yesterday and the other is called tomorrow. Today is the right day to love, believe, do and mostly live. Hard times build determination and inner strength. Through them we can also come to appreciate the uselessness of anger. Instead of getting angry nurture a deep caring and respect for troublemakers because by creating such trying circumstances they provide us with invaluable opportunities to practice tolerance and patience. When you realize you've made a mistake, take immediate steps to correct it. In the practice of tolerance, one's enemy is the best teacher. Share your knowledge. It is a way to achieve immortality. Peace does not mean an absence of conflicts. Differences will always be there. Peace means solving these differences through peaceful means, through dialogue, education, knowledge, and through humane ways. Compassion is the radicalism of our time. A good friend who points out mistakes and imperfections and rebukes evil is to be respected as if he reveals the secret of some hidden treasure. The way to change others' minds is with affection, and not anger. If there is no solution to the problem then don't waste time worrying about it. If there is a solution to the problem then don't waste time worrying about it. If you have fear of some pain or suffering, you should examine whether there is anything you can do about it. If you can, there is no need to worry about it. If you cannot do anything, then there is also no need to worry. The true hero is one who conquers his own anger and hatred. True change is within. Leave the outside as it is. If scientific analysis were conclusively to demonstrate certain claims in Buddhism to be false, then we must accept the findings of science and abandon those claims. Love and compassion are the true religions to me. But to develop this, we do not need to believe in any religion.